I was fighting, I was getting frustrated, and I thought something's got to happen. And as it happened, yeah, yeah, same with Frank Warren. Um, I had three fights, and he promised me all title fight, and it happened. You know, I had the three fights. I was on Sky Sports, which was great. I was where I wanted to be. I was getting paid decent money, and then yeah, I was just you know it was, it was great. I had a fight with uh, Steve Collins. Uh, Steve Collins was the champion, and um, he sort of. Uh, he didn't fancy the fight, you know. I, I he said he was injured. There's a couple of reasons, but yeah, I understand why he didn't. You know, obviously he was he was in big fights with uh, Eubank and Ben, and obviously he's fighting this young kid that's not already got a massive name. Twenty knockouts in twenty one fights, is it worth the gamble? But then stepped uh, Chris Eubank, who, um, if anything, I was more wary of with the Eubank because he's one of them guys where when his back's against the wall, he's a dangerous, dangerous fucking animal. But you, you know. put him on his ass the first, what is it, 20 seconds, the first minute or something? Man, I, that's the thing. It's probably the worst thing I did, right? Because <laughs> bear in mind, I knocked my first 20 fights before my hands started packing in because my hands got worse as my career mm. went on. I knocked 19, I think, of the first 20 fights. And um, I went eight rounds twice, five rounds once. Everybody else was knocked out the first two rounds. So he boxed in the guy, Eubank, who's been in wars, who's seasoned, man. He knows it, to get in there. I always remember, like, the press conference, I was, I was cocky as fuck. So I remember, I think it was at the Grove, and I was like, fucking Chris Eubank. You know what I mean? I'm a fucking boy from on the train from the valleys. You know I mean? in the funny, in the, I finally got the spotlight. And he, I see his Harley Davidson. I was like, fucking, I fucking love, I love watching Eubank, Ben, and Collins and all these. So I remember saying, I just remember looking across to him, and he's like, I said, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> he just looked at me and went, I'm going to take you to one place that you've never been. I'm going to take you to the wow. And I'm looking, it was fucking wow, right? But trust me, in that fight, after three or four rounds, I was fucked. That's the only way to explain it. I was exhausted. Um, I think that um, I didn't know how to sort of pace myself. The excitement got to me. And dropping him with my first left hook, like you banks down. I'm like trying to finish him, hitting every, throwing everything at him. Nothing more disheartening after about five, six rounds when you know you're only halfway through the fight. Inside, you know you're not going to knock him out. And you, and you see him walking around doing this, like walking around the ring and I'm like, out of breath, I'm panting, but you know, it's just exhausted, absolutely exhausted. And he was true to his promise, you know, he did take me to the well. And it was by far the toughest fight I ever had as regards to exhaustion. I was fucking completely exhausted, man. Like, I couldn't move for three days afterwards. Like, lactic acid could not move. It was really, really tough. And like you said, I... Because he'd only lost two fights prior to that too, Steve Collins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. But he was, I think, because Eubank used to fight, he had a good rest. And, uh, fuck, he was, he was tough. Is he as tough as people say? Like, I've always rated him. People love to hate him, but people love to, because he's that yeah. guy, when you see him, you do want to watch him because it's his character. Mm. It's his, his things that he does, what he says, but what a fighter. So when you put yeah. him on his ass and he told you, look, you're coming to the trenches with me. Like, I knew I was, yeah, and, and, I was and then, but every time, every interview I've watched with Eubank, he's always spoke highly of you because people says you couldn't punch, but he says you're fast and you're, you're and it's painful. Steve yeah. Collins, every time I watched him, because I watched you all sitting around the table, he never ever seemed to give you credit. Why do you think that is? Do you think he was fearful Col of you? Um, Collins, I just think, well, I, I, to be honest, I, I honestly believe, like, I believe Collins would have been an easier fight than Eubank. Well, saying easier, because Eubank was fucking tough, man. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, I was preparing for you, I was preparing for Steve Collins, different style than Chris Eubank. Like Steve Fallen Collins, Steve comes to you. I love counter punching. It was lacy fights. I love people coming to me. I was preparing for Steve Collins. So when Eubank, when he sort of retired 10 days before the fight, Eubank was already boxing on the, on the card. He was already fit. But I was more worried about Eubank because, you know, you see what happened with himself and Michael Watson, he got injured. So you're a young kid and you see how dangerous he can be. You've seen him against Nigel Benn. He goes down, he gets back. And he's tough and he was hungry. He wanted, and I'm like... Okay, I was more nervous. I'll be honest with you, I was more a bit more nervous fighting Eubank than I was uh, fighting Steve Collins. And um, yeah, like I said, man, I, I remember I was supposed to come in the ring at 10, got pushed back to 11 o'clock. I didn't get in the ring till fucking 12 o'clock, right? So I got so excited in the change rooms. Me and dad done about fucking 15 rounds on the pads, right? So I, was, <laughs> I remember getting in the ring, I was all like, the, the music, uh, 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 was it Chef of the Ring? Oh man, I was just fucking, like I said, I was, I was just, 
after the first couple of rounds, I was tired. I was knackered. I was exhausted. They, like I said, impaced myself, nervous energy and so on. And imagine everything you've ever trained for all your life on that one night from going, not just financially, but your dream as a 10-year-old to become world champion against somebody that I've admired and watched as an amateur, watching him against Ben Watson, you bad. Oh, one day you'll have to fight him and you're fighting him. Yeah. You know? Because when you won the British title, you didn't look as happy because I think you've done an interview after and it says, well, it's nothing because I won the world title. Then when you eventually won the world title, what's that feeling like, Joe, for everything you've worked hard for? Everybody kind of underrated at that time. People just saying that you're doing shortcuts, this and that, but to then beat one of the best, one of the greatest. How was that feeling? Yeah, it was uh, it was awesome feeling, but like um, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Um, I wanted to be a unified world champion. And that's the thing, I always set myself goals. And my dad always said something to me that stuck in my head, always train like a challenger. And it's when you train like a champion, that's where they lose. Don't, you know what I mean? So always train like a challenger. Like So beating Eubank, I want to unify the title. 